everyone welcome to edupedia world videos in today's lecture we will cover the topic under the following heads first we will discuss about occurrence of metals the major source of metal is the earth's crust metals are also present in sea water in the form of metal salts such as NaCl, KCl, MgCl2, etc. The relative abundance of the element in the earth crust is shown in this pie chart. The percentages of the 12 most abundant element in the crust in the earth crust. Oxygen is the most abundant element in the earth's crust the next most abundant being silicon followed by aluminium an element which is less reactive in the activity series often occurs in native state in the earth's crust for example copper silver lead rhodium palladium mercury platinum etc the metals which occur at the top of the activity series never occur in the native state for the simple reason that they are reactive metals. For example, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and aluminium. And most of these metals occur in the earth's crust in the form of their salts. The metals such as zinc, iron, tin and lead occurring in the middle of the activity series are moderately reactive and occur in the earth's crust usually as oxides, carbonates or sulfides. Now minerals and ores. The natural materials found inside the earth's crust containing metals in their combined states are called minerals. The minerals are usually associated with earthy materials called gang. The minerals are not suitable for the extraction of metals economically. The naturally occurring minerals from which metals can be extracted profitably are called ores. So all ores are minerals but all minerals are not ores. The metal compounds which are found in the form of minerals and ores in the earth's crust have low solubility in water. In the combined state metals occur in more than one form. For example carbonates, oxides, sulfides, halides, phosphates and silicates. The silicates are not worked out for the extraction of metals due to the difficulties involved in the extraction of metals from silicate ores. The ores containing low concentration of metals are used for extraction of metals only if they can be processed easily and economically. The required minimum concentration of a metal in an ore varies from metal to metal. For example, for aluminium and iron it can be 30% or more but for copper it can only 1% or even less. Now minerals found in India. India is very rich in variety of minerals. Largest deposits of coal, mica and rock phosphates, limestone, ores of iron, manganese and chromium are found in Jharkhand and Orisha. Sizable deposits of bauxites, ores of manganese and chromium are found in Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. Rajasthan is rich in rock pho phosphates, galena, mica, quartz, zinc blend, gypsum and copper ore. Tamil Nadu has sizable reserves of bauxite, gypsum, mica, limestone, lignite and ores of iron and manganese. West Bengal is rich in coal, dolomite and tungsten ore. 
Kerala has large deposits of limonite, monazite, rutile and garnet. Uttar Pradesh is rich in rock phosphates, dolomite, magnesite. India's estimate reserves of some important ores is like this. Ores of aluminium, it is around 2462 million tons. Ores of iron is around 10052 million tons, etc. Now, the next topic is activity series and metallurgical processes. Metals are classified into three categories on the basis of their reactivity. First is metals of low reactivity. Second, metals of moderate reactivity. And third is metals of high reactivity. The techniques of extraction of metals differ for metals falling in each category. We can see that this is our activity series. Sodium, potassium, sodium, calcium, Mg, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, copper, mercury, silver, gold and platinum. So this is most reactive metal. from potassium to aluminium electrolytic reduction method is used electrolytic reduction this method is used and from zinc to lead reduction using carbon reduction using carbon. Copper and mercury reduction by heat alone. Reduction by heat. And from silver to platinum found in native state in the earth crust. They are found in native state in the earth's crust. Now the next topic is metallurgy. What is metallurgy? The science and technology employed for the extraction of metals economically on a large scale from their ores and refining them for use is called metallurgy. The process of extraction of a metal depends on the nature of ore, impurities present in the ore and physical and chemical properties of the metal to be extracted. No single universal method can be used for the extraction of all the metals. However, the common steps for metallurgy are first is the concentration of ore, second is conversion of concentrated ore into metal oxide, the third step is extraction of metal by the reduction of metal oxide to metal and the fourth step is refining of impure metals. Let us discuss each step and the method involves involved in it. The first step is concentration of ore. Ores are generally associated with unwanted foreign materials such as clay, sand and granite. 
the impurities present in an ore are called gang. So we can say that ore consists of impurities along with gang. In the first step of processing of an ore, it is essential to remove the gang. The process of removal of unwanted material, which we also call gang, from an ore is called concentration or dressing of ore. The ore is pulverized and ground to a fine powder in crushers and grinders. The ore is then concentrated by removing the gang. We will discuss some methods for concentration of ores. The first method is gravity separation or levigation. The process by which the lighter gang particles are removed from the heavier ore particles by washing with water is called levigation or hydraulic washing. The process is based on the specific gravities of ore and gang particles. The powdered ore is washed with upward stream of running water when the lighter gang particles are washed away and the heavier ore particles are left behind. The process is employed for the oxide ores of heavy metals such as iron and tin and native ores of silver, gold and platinum. Now the second proce process is froth flotation process. The process is used for the concentration of sulphide ores and the principle is that the ore particles are preferentially wetted by oil while the gang particles are wetted by water. The powdered ore is mixed with water and a small quantity of pine oil in a tall tank. We can also see the image of a froth flotation tank. So powdered ore is mixed with water and a small quantity of pine oil in this tank. The mixture is agitated by blowing compressed air through it when froth is formed. The froth carries with it the ore particles. The froth floats on the surface of water and is skimmed off. The gang particles settle at the bottom of the tank. The froth is allowed to collapse and dry for recovery of ore particles. This method is used for the concentration of low grade sulphide ores such as zinc blend, galena and copper pyrites. The third process is magnetic separation. This method is employed when either the ore or the impurities are magnetic in nature. The powdered ore is dropped on a conveyor belt which moves over two rollers. We can see in the figure two rollers and ore is moving on this rollers. So when the O particles pass over the magnetic roller, the magnetic particles of the ore are attracted by the magnetic field. The ore and gang particles are separated in two different heaps. The magnetic fo particles fall nearer to the magnetic roller and the non-magnetic gang falls further off. The method is useful for separating magnetite, chromite and pyrolusite from non-magnetic gang. The next process is chemical separation or leaching process. In this process, the powdered ore is 
treat it with a suitable chemical reagent which selectively dissolve the desired metallic component of the O to form a soluble product. The impurities are left behind as undesired residue. A suitable chemical treatment of the filtrate leads to the regeneration of the desired metallic component of the ore in concentrated form. This process is usually used for the en enrichment of oxide ores. Thank you for watching Adipedia World Videos.